Arthur and David Coven, and starring two of radio's foremost actors, Clifford Carpenter and Lawson Zerby, in Strange New World. This is the mysterious traveler inviting you to join me on another journey into the realm of the strange and the terrifying. I hope you will enjoy the trip, and it will thrill you a little and chill you a little. So settle back, get a good grip on your nerves, and be comfortable, if you can, as we follow two young flyers on a routine flight which suddenly deviated from normal and brought them to a strange new world. Well, our story begins aboard His Majesty's ship, the submarine Valiant, somewhere in the vast Pacific. Captain Farnsworth, commander of the Valiant, makes his way along the narrow passageway of the submarine to the sick bay and uh, steps into the small cabin. No. No, Pete, no. You're wrong. Wing flaps are down. Well, we're going to hit Pete. What? How is he, Higgins? Uh, not too good, sir. Lord knows how many days it was adrift on that life raft. Did you find any identification on him? Oh, yes, sir. His dog tags. Here they are, sir. Thank you. Daniel Walker. Lieutenant, United States Air Force. Of course, sir. I knew from his lingo, sir, he was an American. That's quite so, quite so. Well, Higgins, you'll have to do what you can for him until we reach a ship with the doctor. Aye, ah, sir. Pete, where... Where am I? I think he's coming out of it, Captain. Yes. Who, who are you? Lie quietly, Lieutenant. I'm Captain Farnsworth, His Majesty's Navy. You're aboard the submarine Valiant. Picked you up an hour ago. Pete. The island. I take it you were forced down while flying, Lieutenant. And what happened? Happened? Yes. Pete Mendez and myself were flying a C-47 from Honolulu to Japan. There were only the two of us. Pete was the pilot. I was holding down co-pilot. We were attached to air transport and had aboard a cargo of medical supplies. We were six hours out of Honolulu, and I'd taken over the controls. Pete was relaxing in his seat, chewing on a chocolate bar. And where's the newspaper we picked up in Honolulu, Junior? Right behind you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, what's the good news? They exploded another atomic bomb at Los Alamos. Oh, yeah? Anything else of interest? Isn't that enough? Hey, what are you doing? I haven't seen that paper yet. I'm sorry. What are you getting so worked up about? What's one atomic explosion, more or less? Oh, you're just a kid wet behind the ears. <laughs> okay, Pop, relax. I was there when the first one was used. Where? Hiroshima. Oh. Well, I didn't know that. There's a lot you don't know, Junior. Yeah, well, give me a chance, will you? You weren't on the plane that uh, actually dropped it, were you? No. I was piloting one of the escorts. It must have been quite a sight. Yeah. I hope I never live to see another one. Yeah. Hey, look at those clouds ahead. We may be in for a rough trip, Junior. Better let me take over. Must be hitting peaks of 150 an hour. We're right in the center of it. 
Wide open? Wide open. How about turning back? I can't. For an hour past point of return. We've been taking this beating for hours. When's it gonna let up? That's hard to say. The worst typhoon I've ever seen. Oh, look at the compass, completely haywire. Any idea where we are? No, not anymore. How long do you think we can take this? What I'm worried about is the gas. We're running low. Yeah, how much we got left? Two hours. Two and a half at the most. Well, that means we're gonna have to set down on the drink. Yeah. Our one hope is that this lets up and we find a ship to sit down there. You better prepare a life raft. Stock it with plenty of water and rations. Okay. I'll take care of it right away. as though we've come through it. Yeah. Well, that was one to tell your grandchildren about. There go the engines. Okay, Junior, get back to the raft. Be ready to launch it when we hit. All right, Pete. Put it down nice and easy. Those are my intentions, Junior. What's the altitude? 1,600. 14. Water rough? Well, not too bad. 800, 600, 4, wing flaps are down. Get ready with the hatch, Junior. Right. We're down to 100. Hang on. You okay, Dad? Yeah. How about you going fast? Here, give me a hand with the raft. Right. There's a lot of water out there. I climb in, will you? Huh? Oh, yeah. That, that's... <sighs> okay, let's shove off. So far, so good. We shoved off into a sea that was running plenty high. In a few minutes, the waves carried us off and the sinking plane was lost to sight. Pete rigged up a distress flag so we could be more easily spotted. Then we settle back to wait. For two nights and one day, we drifted in a fast-running sea with a heavy overcast. There wasn't a sign of a plane or ship. By the dawn of the second day, the overcast lifted and the sea became calmer. It was around noontime that Pete spotted the island. We rigged up a small sail and began paddling for it. You recognize the island, Pete? Any, any idea which one it is? No. Uh, your guess is as good as mine. Looks fairly big. Yeah. Hey, look. The channel through the reef and into the lagoon is directly ahead. The tide is helping to carry us in. Good. Sure we want to end up on those reefs. Brother. We're really moving. Yeah, another minute or two and we'll hit the beach. You think there might be some natives on the island? There should be. It certainly looks big enough. I don't see any huts or anything. No. Hold on, we're going to hit the beach. Yeah. Oh, that does it. How about and give me a hand? Let's drag it out of the water. Yep. Right. Oh, it sure feels good to be able to walk. Yeah. All right, pull. Okay. That's it. A little more. Okay. There. Oh. Hey, look at those coconuts. Yeah. Let's begin looking the island over, Junior. See if we can find any natives. Pete took some food and a canteen of water from the raft, and we started walking along the beach, now and then cutting in them to look for water. It took us six hours to walk around the island. And the sun was just setting as we got back to the life raft. Sit down, Junior. Take a load off your feet. I don't mind if I do. Cigarette? Yeah, thanks. Well, we found fresh water. Signs that natives had once lived here, but they sure aren't here anymore. No. That's strange. 
Considering the island is three miles wide, almost two miles long. I've seen natives living on islands one half the size. I wonder why they left. Got any ideas? No. Well, it's just you and me. Sit tight and lead the right Riley. So we're picked up. Yeah. And the first thing we'll do in the morning is burn up a distress signal on one of the palm trees. We'll also get brush together for a fire. Check. What do you say we have supper and turn in? It's been a long day. Okay, Judith. Sounds like a good idea. I heard something moving around in, in, in the brush inland. Oh, probably wild pigs. Islands full of go to sleep. It, it, made, it made too much noise for a pig. Oh, holy smoke, Junior. It certainly wasn't an elephant. Well, maybe not, but... You hear that? Yeah. I heard. Does that sound like a pig in the brush? Ah, maybe there's a herd of them. Who's kidding who? Okay. Okay, where do I get my 45? All right, come on. Let's have a look. Step lightly. Sounds as if it's over that way. Yeah. And listen to that. It almost does sound like an elephant. Look, the moon's coming out from behind those clouds. That's a break. Yeah. We're getting closer. Yeah, we better take it easy. The sound of it, that 45 of yours isn't gonna do much good. Yeah, I got the feeling I'm, I'm dreaming all this. I've been on dozens of tropical islands like this one. Biggest thing you'll find on any of them are wild pigs. That's no wild pig, brother. Yeah. That's why this seems like a dream. What the devil could it be? See anything yet? No. Out of those palm leaves, they're sharp. Yeah, okay. Hey, listen to that. Good Lord. Look. It was like a nightmare. A nightmare you can't escape from, dry as you will. There, 50 yards away in a clearing in the underbrush, was a monster. A monster that baffled the eye and brain for a moment, then began to come into focus and take shape. What I saw before me was a water crab, only a hundred times larger than the crabs that scurried along the beach. The monster crab in the clearing stood fully 20 feet high, with legs the thickness of palm tree trunks. The antenna on its frightening head was yards long. Its eyes were unbearably evil, even from a distance. Its 12 legs carried it slowly but lightly through the underbrush. Don't move, Dan. We don't want to attract its attention. Pete, what is it? I don't know. It's a crab of some sort. Only a hundred times larger than any I've ever seen. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Oh, the size of it. it. Must be at least 18 feet high. And those claws. You could park a car under its belly. I can't believe it. It's moving off. Yeah. Do you think there may be others like it around? I don't know. I hope not. Look, it's moving toward the beach. Yeah, I see it. Yet I still can't believe. Maybe it's an hallucination. Both of us having the same hallucination, hardly. Well, how do you count for it? I can. It's on the beach going into the water. Yeah. That goes. God. Look. 
We better stay here, Junior. And just sit tight for the rest of the night. Well, it's good to see daylight again. Yeah. Let's take a walk over to that clearing in the underbrush. Where we saw it, huh? Okay. And what do you think about it? Oh, I don't know. Now, maybe what we saw was just a fluke of nature. It's possible. Yes, possible. Yeah, what other explanation can there be? I've got one. But it's so incredible. I well, it's happened. I'll tell you later. I want to think about it some more. Well, here we are. Here's here's the clearing. Yeah. We first saw it by those palm trees over there. Look. The tracks of the monster. In the sand. Look how large and deep the tracks are. Yeah. It was a beautiful morning. Until now. Come on. Let's follow him. Okay. Now they they go through the brush here and and towards the beach. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is the way we saw it go. Well, the brush is flattened as though a tank had rolled through here. There's no problem following it. Look. This is where it came out on the beach. Yeah, and there's the tracks on the sand leading into the water. It's out there, somewhere in the waters of the lagoon. Yeah. Look, let's unload the raft and then paddle out into the lagoon. What for? Holy smokes, don't tell me you're going looking for that monster. Well, not exactly, but I got a hunch. And I want to check on it. It's crazy paddling out into that lagoon. How, how do you know it won't attack? Once we get out there. I don't. It's just a chance we'll have to take. But why? So that I can find the answer to all this. Are you going with me? Okay. I'm going with you. Paddling you across the lagoon. All you've been doing is peering down into the water. What are you trying to spot? The monster? No. Well, if it isn't a monster you're looking for, what then? Stop paddling. I think we found it. Found what? Take a look over the side. Into the water. I don't see a thing. Oh, the sun's been in your eyes. Keep looking towards the bottom. Till your eyes get used to the water. Uh, I don't see it. Wait a minute. I can hardly make it out, but there seems to be a wreck on the bottom. A big one. It is a wreck. That's a battleship you see on the bottom. A battleship? Yeah, don't you understand? This island. It's Bikini. Bikini? You mean... You mean when they dropped an atomic bomb on those old battleships? Yeah. A dozen ships on the bottom here. All sunk by atomic bomb tests. You don't think the island's radioactive, do you? Well, not enough to do us any harm. It's been years since the test. You said you had a crazy explanation for that monster we saw last night. Does that tie in with all this? Yeah. How? Now, look, you'll think I'm nuts, but here goes. We dropped a bomb into this lagoon to see what an underwater explosion would do to those warships. Now, what are you getting at? We know what the atomic bomb did to the ships. But do we know what effect it had on the fish line? Here in the lagoon. Are you saying that the monster crab we saw last night was the result of the bomb dropped into this lagoon? Well, what other explanation can there be? Remember, Dan, the effect of the bomb on the survivors of Hiroshima left wounds and illnesses that doctors had never seen before. Now, who's to say that the radioactivity in this lagoon couldn't have caused fish life to multiply in size a hundredfold? It can't be. It just can't be. Well, why not? Radioactivity causing a crab to 
grow a thousand times bigger? Well, how else can you account for that monster crap we saw last night? I don't know. Well, think about it. Meanwhile, let's paddle back to the beach. The two of us paddled silently across the lagoon to the beach and dragged the raft out of the water. Time and time again, I found myself turning to look out over the waters of the lagoon as Pete's words ran through my mind. His explanation seemed an impossible one, and yet, what other answer could there be? Two of us sat on the beach smoking, watching the moon come up over the lagoon of Bikini. Sure is a beautiful night. Yeah. You think they'll send search planes this way, Pete? Well, sooner or later, they'll find us. As long as we have fresh water and fish, we're okay. Yeah, I guess so. Pete! Look at the water of the lagoon. Holy smoke. Why, it's being churned up as though there were a dozen whales out there. Could it be whales? It's not in these waters. Pete, there's something enormous out, out there threshing around. Well, maybe it'll break through to the surface and we'll be able to see it. Could it be that monster crab we saw last night? Oh, it's something bigger, much bigger. Bigger? Well, that would make whatever it is a couple, couple hundred feet in length. Yeah. The way the water's being churned up, there must be a fight going on out there. Pete, look. They're coming out of the water. The monster crab we saw last night. No, no, we're following. There's two others. Dan, some of them are coming this way. Come on, we've got to get out of here. What about our supplies? There's no time to grab them. Get a move on. This way. There were, there were dozens of them. Coming out of the water. Well, they came out of the lagoon, so fleeing the fight that was going on out there. Whatever it is, it's in the lagoon. I never want to see it. Well, it must be the side of the destroyer. Where are we running to, Pete? I'm getting pushed. Oh, let's stop for a minute. Get our bearings, huh? Monster crabs. There must be dozens of them. Overrunning the island. Look. The moon's good by the clouds. No, just our luck can't see much now. Those crabs. Besides that they're all over the place. Yeah. They wouldn't have a shot. No, no, we might run into one in the dark. We're better off staying here. One of them seems to be heading this way. Can you make out from which direction it's coming? No. The moon would come out behind those clouds. Hey, listen. It's coming closer. What are you doing with that 45? It's better than nothing. Maybe the sound of shots might frighten it off. It's getting closer all the time. But I, I can't see it. Can you? No. Your eyes open. Sounds almost on top of us. Pete! There it is! Here go! No! No! Oh! Oh! Pete! Pete! Look at me with a claw. This is red fast. My chest. Oh, lie quiet. Let me look. Back to the beach for medical supplies. No, 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 don't. No, it's too dangerous. It's no use anyway. No use? I'm dying. No, no, Pete. Oh, listen to me. You know, first, the first thing in the morning, if Raft is still okay, you shove off. Don't, don't stay here. Too dangerous. Pete, let me go over the medical supply. No, 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 no. When you're rescued, explain to them. Strange new world. 
sea life, multiplying hundredfold radioactivity of atomic bomb and lagoon. Sea life will increase, overrun seven seas. So, um, I sat there beside Pete's body for the rest of the night. Several times I heard monster crabs passing in the brush nearby, but I didn't leave. In the morning, Alan was once again peaceful, tranquil. I buried Pete on a high hill and then returned to the beach. The raft was overturned, the supplies gone. I overhauled the raft, gathered coconuts and a supply of water. By noon, I was paddling across the three-mile lagoon to the channel through the reefs that led to sea. As dusk came, I was several miles out to sea. <laughs> Nights and days slipped by without my seeing a plane or ship. And more days, and soon my water was gone. The days that followed were ones of thirst and torture. The will to live left me, and I lost consciousness. The next thing I remember was feeling hands lift me and finding myself here. Where? Say I am. His Majesty ship. The submarine Valiant. Submarine Valiant? Yes. Where where did you pick me up? Fifty miles southeast of the island of Bikini. Bikini? Bikini. Now you must lie back. Rest. What you need is sleep. Sleep. Sleep, yeah. That's it. Close your eyes. That's it, lad. He's fallen asleep, sir. Yes. Poor devil. Did you catch his ravings about monsters and all that, sir? Yes. Poor chap is clearly out of his mind. Must be, sir. Yet his ravings gives the one the, the chills, I do. It's quite so, quite so. Devil, take it. What happened, sir? Feels as if we've hit a derelict. Carry on, Higgins. Aye, aye, sir. What was that? Well, walk you after it. Too bad. Well, we may have hit a derelict. It's hard to say. The captain's looking into it. Now rest easy, lad. Oh, me, what's that? They're being tossed about like a ball. He's dragging us down. Nonsense, lad. I just slide back and leave everything. Now hear this. No. Now hear this. Captain Farnsworth speaking. We're being attacked by some creature of the deep. All crew members to battle station. This is a mysterious traveler again. Did you enjoy our trip? Oh, what happened to the submarine's alien? Well, after a two-hour battle with an unseen enemy, it managed to escape. But at a naval court of inquiry, Captain Farnsworth was at a loss to explain the nature of the enemy his submarine had been in battle with. Well, of course, there was uh, Lieutenant Dan Walker's testimony, but obviously the poor fellow was out of his head. Who ever heard of monster crabs 20 feet high and denizens of the deep as large as a destroyer. The court could reach no verdict in the matter of the submarine valiant, and there the case rested. Oh, now, if uh, by some chance you should happen to take a voyage across the Pacific, and one night as you stroll on deck, you see a, a giant... Oh, you have to get off here. I'm sorry. But I'm sure we'll meet again. I take this same train every week at this same time.